In this lecture, we're going to talk about the diagonalization of symmetric matrices. It turns out that symmetric matrices have some pretty good properties when it comes to diagonalization. So first of all, what is a symmetric matrix? Well, a matrix is symmetric if when we take its transpose, we get the same matrix that we started with. So of course the matrix has to be square for that to happen, and the entries on the opposite sides of the diagonal have to be equal to each other. And also recall that a matrix is diagonalizable if we can write it in the form P, D, P inverse, where D is a diagonal matrix and P is an invertible matrix. Something else that you should recall is that not every matrix is diagonalizable. Now remember when we talk about diagonalization, we're thinking about eigenvalues. The entries in the diagonal of the matrix D that we were talking about, those are eigenvalues for the matrix A that we would want to try to diagonalize. So it makes sense to start thinking about eigenvectors and eigenvalues of symmetric matrices. And one nice theorem that we have is that if A is a symmetric matrix, then any two eigenvectors of A from different eigenspaces are orthogonal. So remember that an eigenspace of A is simply the set of all vectors of the matrix A associated with that particular eigenvector. So what we're saying here is that if we have two eigenvectors for different eigenvalues, then those two eigenvectors must be orthogonal to each other for a symmetric matrix. So in the proof, we suppose that we have two of those types of eigenvectors, two eigenvectors for two distinct eigenvalues, lambda 1 and lambda 2, and our goal is to show that the vectors v1 and v2 are orthogonal. So the key here is that we're going to use the alternate formulation of dot product. So remember that when we have two vectors u and v, one of the ways that we can represent u dot v is as u transpose times v, thinking of it as matrix multiplication, which would give us a one by one matrix, which we then think of as a scalar. So if we take lambda 1 v1 and dot it with v2, well, lambda 1 v1 transpose times v2 that's a v1 transpose, because v1 is an eigenvector associated with eigenvalue lambda 1. Now another property that we learned about transposes is that if you take two matrices, multiply together, and take the transpose, that's the same result as taking the individual transposes, but you reverse the order. So we get v1 transpose a transpose times v2, but a is a symmetric matrix, so a transpose and a are the same thing. a v2 is lambda 2 v2, and that's because v2 is an eigenvector for the eigenvalue lambda 2. And then now the scalar lambda 2 can get pulled out, and then we'll rewrite this back in the normal dot product form. So we get lambda 2 times the dot product v1 v2. So the result here is that lambda 1 v1 dot v2 equals lambda 2 times v1 dot v2. So now we're going to subtract the lambda 2 v1 dot v2 from both sides. So we get lambda 1 v1 dot v2 minus lambda 2 v1 dot v2 equals 0. And then we can factor out the v1 dot v2. That gives us lambda 1 minus lambda 2 times v1 dot v2 equals 0. So that's two scalars multiplied together equaling zero, and that means that one of those two scalars has to be zero. Since we assumed that lambda 1 and lambda 2 were distinct eigenvalues, that means that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are not equal to each other. So it must be that v1 dot v2, it must be that that number equals zero, which is exactly what we were trying to show. We were trying to show that v1 and v2 were orthogonal, that means that their dot product is zero, and that's what we proved. Now something else that we've talked about is that a matrix P is orthogonal if its inverse is the same as its transpose. And that's the same as the matrix having orthonormal columns. And we say that a matrix is orthogonally diagonalizable is not only that it's diagonalizable, not only that there exists a diagonal matrix D and an invertible matrix P such that A equals P D P inverse, but actually that we can find an orthogonal matrix P. That's much stronger than the matrix being invertible but not only does it have an inverse, but the inverse equals its transpose. So if that happens, then we say that the matrix is orthogonally di diagonalizable, if it's possible to find a special matrix, an orthogonal matrix P, to make that happen. So if we had an orthogonally diagonalizable matrix, what's the transpose of that matrix look like? Well, remember, when we take the transpose of a product of matrices, we can take the transpose of each individual matrix, but we just have to reverse the order. So we apply this transpose to each of the matrices that we're multiplying together, but then we have to reverse the order. So we get P transpose transpose, 
D transpose, P transpose. But if you take the double transpose, then you just get back the matrix you started with. The transpose of a diagonal matrix is the same as the diagonal matrix, because if we swap the numbers on the opposite side of the, of the diagonal, we're just swapping a bunch of zeros around, which doesn't change anything. So that's the same as PDP transpose, which is the same as A. So any orthogonally diagonalizable matrix must be symmetric. And in fact, this is an if and only if. A square matrix A is orthogonally diagonalizable if and only if it's symmetric. So we've already proved one direction of that if and only if. We've proved that if the matrix is orthogonally diagonalizable, then it's symmetric. It's much harder to prove the other direction. It is true, but it's much harder to prove that if A is symmetric, then it must therefore be orthogonally diagonalizable. So we're going to omit that proof here, but it does turn out to be true. And in fact, much more is true. Symmetric matrices are very special. And in fact, they have all of these properties. So a symmetric matrix has all real eigenvalues. So remember that an n by n matrix is going to have a characteristic polynomial of degree n, which has at most n roots. But in fact, in this case, it won't have any complex roots. It'll have n real eigenvalues as long as we count multiplicities. The dimension of the eigenspace, where here dimension just means the number of vectors in a basis for that space, that equals the multiplicity of that eigenvalue lambda as it appears as a root of that characteristic equation. The eigenspaces are mutually orthogonal, we've already proved that, and then what we, the theorem we just talked about shows that symmetric matrix is orthogonally diagonalizable. So again, we're omitting this proof here, but it just goes to show that symmetric matrices have a lot of these nice properties. Let's focus instead on how we actually go about finding this orthogonal diagonalization of a symmetric matrix. So it's going to be very similar to what we did for just diagonalizing a matrix that happens to be diagonalizable. We start by finding the eigenvalues and solving the characteristic equation. And for each eigenvalue, we find a basis for the corresponding eigenspace. So far, that's the same as what we were doing before. But now, since we want to find an orthogonal matrix P, we need orthonormal columns for that matrix. And so we're going to use the Gram-Schmidt process. I say if necessary here, it's highly unlikely that the eigenvectors that you would have found in the previous steps just miraculously happen to turn out to be orthonormal. It's possible, but it's very unlikely. But uh, So typically you're going to have to use Gram-Schmidt here. And that gives you the orthonormal basis for each individual eigenspace. So individually those bases are orthonormal within themselves, but since they're also mutually orthogonal to each other, together, if I just join all those bases together into one big set of vectors, then that set will be an orthonormal basis for all of Rn. So the matrix P has those vectors as its columns, and then the matrix D is going to have the diagonal entries being the eigenvalues corresponding to those columns. So let's take a look at an example here. So here's a symmetric matrix, so notice that the entries on opposite sides of the diagonal are equal to each other. So if we take the transpose of this matrix, we would just get the same matrix A that we started with. And so since it's symmetric, it must be orthogonally diagonalizable. So let's actually find that orthogonal diagonalization. In other words, we want to find a matrix P and a diagonal matrix D such that A equals P, D, P transpose. Now we're going to use Mathematica to make our job easier here. Remember, especially the Gram-Schmidt process here is very tedious. There's a lot of calculation steps. None of it's particularly difficult, but it just requires a lot of number crunching, and that's what computers are really good at here. So I'm going to show you a few different ways that we could do this uh, within Mathematica. So first we define our matrix, which I'll call capital A, and then if we want the characteristic polynomial, then that's really just the determinant of A minus X times the identity matrix. Here I'm using X as our variable. Technically it probably should be called lambda, but it's just easier to type X in the computer rather than typing out the word lambda. Another way to do this, rather than using the determinant command, is to just use the command a characteristic polynomial with a capital C and a capital P. It gives us the same result. And either way, we can set that polynomial equal to zero and solve, and that gives us our eigenvalues. Notice that we have two eigenvalues, three and five, and this eigenvalue has multiplicity two, because it appears twice as a root, and this eigenvalue five also has multiplicity two. So by the spectral theorem, that means that the eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalue 3 has dimension 2. In other words, that eigenspace would have two basis vectors. And same thing for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 5. 
that basis for that eigenspace would have two vectors as well. And so together we would have a full basis of four vectors. And probably the simplest way to figure out this information is simply use the eigenvalues command, which also gives us the duplicate multiplicity if we need it. So again, the five appearing twice in this list just tells us that as a root of the characteristic polynomial, five appears with multiplicity two, and then three also appears with multiplicity two. Okay, now step two is that for each of those eigenvalues, we wanna find an orthonormal basis for the corresponding eigenspace. So let's start with the eigenvalue three. Remember that the eigenspace of three is the solution space of the matrix equation, a minus three i times the vector x equals the zero vector, where three there is the lambda, that's the eigenvalue that I'm looking at at the moment. And so what we need to do to solve this matrix equation is we need to set up our augmented matrix and row reduce it. Well, when we augment this matrix, all we're doing is adding an extra column of zeros at the end, which we don't need to actually do because nothing is going to happen to that column of zeros when we do the row reduction. We've seen that before. So when I row reduce this, the augmented row reduced matrix is going to look like, according to what I got out of Mathematica, it's going to look like this. And if it helps just to mentally think about what this is telling us, we can go ahead and add in that augmented column of zeros if we need it. But what this is telling us is that x1 plus x3 equals 0, x2 plus x4 equals 0, and x3 and x4 are both free. So our solution vector looks like x1, x2, x3, x4 equals negative 1, because x1 equals negative x3, 0, 1, 0, x3, plus 0, negative 1, 0, 1, x4. And so here we have our two basis vectors for our eigenspace. And we do the same thing for lambda equals 5. So again, according to the row reduction, our row reduced matrix looks like this. I like adding the augmented column of zeros, just helps me think about it. And so that makes our equations look like x1 minus x3 equals 0, x2 minus x4 equals 0, x3 and x4 are free. And so our vector solution looks like x1, x2, x3, x4. So now x1 equals x3, so that's going to be a 1, 0, 1, 0, x3, and 0, 1, 0, 1, x4. And again, we have two more vectors. These are the basis vectors for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 5. Now again, as you might suspect, there's a shortcut in Mathematica for doing this in a little bit shorter way, and that's using the command eigensystem. So capital E, no capital S. So easy to, to make a typo with that. But all we do is type in eigensystem of the matrix A, and it not only gives us the eigenvalues with the multiplicities listed, but it also gives us the corresponding basis vectors. So these first two vectors correspond to five, and these third and fourth vectors correspond to three. That's in the order that the eigenvalues are listed here. So they correspond each vector listed corresponds to the eigenvalue in the order that it's listed. So now step three is to use the Gram-Schmidt process, if necessary, to find an orthonormal basis for each eigenspace. And it is necessary in this case because these bases that we found are not orthonormal. They do happen to uh, coincidentally turn out to be orthogonal in this case. If we take the dot products, we do get zero, but those vectors that we got are not unit vectors. So either way, we can use the orthogonalize command, which we learned about before, where we type in the basis that we got and we say to Mathematica that we want to orthogonalize it, and this is going to be an orthonormal basis for that eigenspace. In this case, the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 3, and we're going to do it again for lambda equals 5. So we take our basis that we got for lambda equals 5, we orthogonalize that, and now we have four vectors that together will be an orthonormal basis for all of our four. So now the final steps are to form the matrices P and D. The matrix P has as its columns the orthonormal basis that we constructed in the previous step. And the matrix D is a diagonal matrix, and the diagonal entries of that matrix are the eigenvalues corresponding to the columns of P. So this first column of P was one of the vectors in our orthonormal basis, and it corresponded to lambda equals 3. This second vector was another vector in our orthonormal basis, and it corresponded to lambda equals 3 as well. These two vectors both corresponded to lambda equals 5. And so this is our 
orthogonal diagonalization, and then we can check that indeed the original matrix A does equal P times D times P inverse, which is the same as P times D times P transpose.